or good noon, I guess it is now, and welcome to the Waterton Glacier Science and History Week 2022. This is our 19th year of co-hosting this event. My name is Tara Carolyn. I'm director of the Crown of the Continent Research Learning Center here at Glacier National Park, and I'd like to thank everyone for joining us today as we hear the latest results from scientific research, conservation, and um, learn about research technology and resources that are available to us um, here at Waterton Glacier International Peace Park. Comprising Waterton Lakes National Park in Alberta, Canada and Glacier National Park in Montana, USA, Waterton Glacier was the very first international peace park that was established in the entire world by local Rotary Clubs back in 1932. We want to start by respectfully acknowledging that we are on the traditional and ancestral homelands of the Siksagaysatapi, Kootenay, Salish, Polispe people, whom we recognize as the original stewards of this land and all the relatives within it. We honor with gratitude the people who have cared for this land throughout the generations and continue to maintain enduring connections to their traditional territories. Today is our first day of a four day webinar series. Each day at noon, we'll bring you a new presentation highlighting current research and conservation topics related to Waterton Glacier International Peace Park. Every year we have dozens of researchers that conduct scientific and historical studies here in the crown of the continent. We're excited to bring some of our latest findings directly to you at your home or office. Um, this presentation will last about 35 minutes with around five to 10 minutes allotted for questions at the end. You can click at the chat icon and depending on whether you are using the online program or whether you've downloaded it on it as an app, the icons might be at the upper right part of your screen if you've downloaded the app. Otherwise, if you're in a browser, they're probably going to be in the middle of their screen. You might have to scroll your mouse across the middle of the screen to get that. And then that bar will disappear after a few minutes of or a minute or so of not having used it. So for the logistics, um, you can click the chat icon, the little chat bubble to open the chat box and you can type your questions at any time during the presentation. You should note that all of your questions and comments will be visible to all participants. Um, you can also wait to ask your questions at the end of the presentation. That's when we will be addressing them. We'll address as many questions as we can at that time. Um, you can also. Well, we'll explain how to raise your hand um, when we get to that point. You can ask questions directly. To improve the presentation view, um, again, where you see all your icons, there's the triple dot with more. You can click on that and you can select full screen to enlarge your view window and you can select focus on content and that will hide all the speaker um, moderator icons and give you a bigger view as well. And for anyone who would like live captioning, you can click the that triple dot again and select turn on live captions from the drop down menu. And with all of the logistics out of the way, um, today I'm we are featuring the presentation titled the Montana Memory Project your online history research resource led by Jennifer Burnell, director of the Montana Memory Project for the Montana State Library. Jennifer taught middle school for 12 years. She holds a Bachelor of Arts in Communications and a master's degree in literacy. In her spare time, she enjoys reading, camping and kayaking. And now I'll turn it over to Jennifer and you can share your screen. Hello everyone. I will share my screen. I'm also going to turn off my camera. So I wanted you to see my face. So you know I'm here. I am a live person. And then I'm going to shut it off and share my screen. And then at the end, when we have time for questions, I'll turn my camera back on so you can ask me questions. I will be doing the same. <clears throat> all right. Can you see my home screen all right, Tara? Already muted. Yes. 
<laughs> okay, thank you. <laughs> um, so if you are not familiar, the Montana Memory Project <clears throat> is a, an online resource for digital collections related to Montana history and Montana culture. And I currently work with um, 80, no, let me scroll down here to the bottom of the page. Yeah, 88 contributors across the state. We have 177 published collections and 78,855 published items at this point in time. This changes every week, this number down here at the bottom. Um, so I work with libraries, museums, and archives across the state to help them digitize their uh, special collections and make them available online on this resource. You can browse this page in several ways. Um, and I wanna talk about how to browse it, but also how to search it and how to narrow your search results so that you find what you're looking for um, if we have it on the website. So start with down here at the bottom of the screen, if you scroll down a little bit, are a bunch of um, little boxes that tell you a type of item that we have and how many. So for example, if you look at art, we have 587 items. Um, you get over here to documents, we have 22,000 items that are documents. And <clears throat> we have 37,000 photographs on, online right now. Um, up here at the top, on the left-hand side, you have a number of icons um, as part of a main menu that appears on every page. We have a menu across the top as well. And sadly, right now, this is not consistent on every page. You have to come back to the homepage to see this. And we are working um, to change that. If you haven't heard, the Montana State Library is going through a rebranding and we had um, our logo put on hold with that rebranding. I will also rebrand and update the website. And so I'm kind of waiting for these web design changes to happen, including embedding this menu in our banner so it appears on every page. So for the time being, you do have to click home, know that it is coming, that that is an improvement that we hope to add to every page very soon. What I've done today is I've opened some tabs across the top because I know when I'm in a GoTo meeting, it loads a lot slower, the pages do, than typical. Um, so I've opened some things ahead of time and I'm gonna start with this browse all button. As I said, there are a number of ways to browse our pages. This allows, this browse all lets you browse all 78,000 items. <clears throat> um, they're all in alphabetical order. These items with some characters sort to the top. And then you'll start to see eight items as you get past the characters and numbers. Um, I'm giving you a quick scroll through the page and I saw, I'm sorry if that's a little dizzy, but I wanted you to kind of see there are 48, un, 48 items per page and there's over 209 pages of content here. On the left, there is a menu that's really important if, as you're searching as well, because this menu appears every time you browse or search. It's going to be format starts with has the following in date on every page. Under format, you do see the format type. So artwork, audio, book, whatever format it is. Um, and then there is a show more, so you can see more of these types. Remember I said there were 37,000 photographs earlier. If I hit this little arrow next to that, I get five more ways to distill this down a little further. Digital collection, creator, subject, contributing institution, and geographic coverage. So because I'm on the Browse All page, every digital collection is gonna come back in this list ordered by the items with the most um, items in the collection. So photographs from the Montana Historical Society is our largest collection online at this point and in the image category and that's 8,622 photographs. And then you can go on down here and see that there are several more. Clicking on one of these will narrow the collection just to those photos. So if I go down a little further here, Glacier National Park has 395 photographs contributed by the Glacier National Park archives. And I saw that Jean was online today. So hello, Jean, shout out to you. She and Anya Heisel worked on getting this content up and online and available for you to use. Every item here then gets listed, all 395 for this collection and you can scroll through and look at those. And if I open an item, just so you can see what it looks like on the screen, um, I get the title, I get information here on the right hand side, which we call metadata, data about the item itself, gives you a description of what you're seeing in the image, as well as several other bits of information here. You'll notice some of these are hyperlinked. So if I wanted to see more mountaineers, clicking on this would take me to all subjects 
for all images that have subjects of mountaineers. Um, I can go back to the Glacier National Park contributing page. Um, I can see all of this collection by clicking on the digital collection here. So there's some clickable links. And finally, at the bottom is information about how to contact the park about this image. On the left hand side of the image are a bunch of different ways to interact with the item itself. So what I find amazing is the zoom quality. Um, you can really zoom in on these images and see them in high resolution because the park took the time to scan these at really high resolution and upload a really nice high quality image. Um, I can also open it to full screen by clicking the zoom to 100% button. So if I click that, you're, it'll take a minute here to resolve, but right from the beginning here, you have an orange box in the lower right-hand corner that shows you how much of this image you're viewing. And I can scroll the image around on the page now. I get to see the incredible detail, um, including the pins on this woman's jacket. Um, and if I scroll over here, I could see the boots they're wearing. Um, so I get to and the buttons on the pants that this person is wearing. Um, so the, the details are incredible, probably better than you could see in the original photograph. Um, and again, the orange box is following me around. So now if I wanted to see more of the photo as a whole, I could just start zooming out and then I can drag the image around. Um, I'm going to scroll up here and close out of this view. There are ways to see it, full-size thumbnail, fit to screen. Um, I can rotate it if for some reason I wanted to see it in a rotated view. Um, and then I can add it to my collection, contact some, me about this, or look at the citation for this item. This is really helpful when you're doing research. Just clicking that gives you the full citation information. On the left-hand side of the screen, you're going to see some link to. So again, it's linked to the Glacier National Park collection. Glacier National Park historical photographs is the name of the collection. And the location is Glacier National Park. And then there's also information about copyright. You're also going to see the option to add tags. So if you know these people and you want to tag them, you can click add. It's going to force me to log in. So I'll come back to that. You could put a a name and put that tag right on this person's head and it will then send an email to us saying that you've tagged an image and we can either approve it or not. We've done the approval process because I'm afraid that teenage kids will get in there and all of a sudden we'll have a bunch of Mickey and Minnie Mouses or something like that in our metadata. Those tags do become searchable so we want to make sure they're accurate. You also have the ability to add a, re a recollection. Again this goes through a moderation process but if you're logged into the system System, you can type your knowledge or memories of the image itself here and share it, um, which is a really great way to add to the story of the image. Um, you can do this with her documents as well. So there's many ways to interact with the um, items. Okay, I'm going to back out of this view. We were looking at the images from the Glacier National Park from the filter by page here. I want to scroll down here, um, get below, excuse my lengthy scrolling here. I have the ability to jump to starts with. I told you these are all sorted alphabetically. So if I wanted to dart, jump to the images that start with P, for example, I'd click P. It tells me there are 18 results that start with the word letter P, and the 18 pictures then are shown here in the middle of the screen. Um, unclicking P will take me back or clicking P again will take me back to the full list. Um, I can also sort by uh, some information about has the following if there's anything set up. In this case, there isn't, but usually with documents, there's an OCR or not OCR. And then the date, I can also choose a date in between to search these items. So this is a little bit about browsing from the, the main Browse All page. Now, like I said, what, no matter where you start your browse, these four uh, options show up here on the left-hand side of the screen. Format starts with has the following date. So I'm gonna jump back to the home page and we're gonna talk about these tabs across the top. So we have a contributors page that lists every contributing institution. This is again in alphabetical order. 
So if I scroll down, I should be able to get to Glacier National Park. And there it is, the National, Glacier National Park Archives. And if I open that, I start to hear, read some information about the archives itself. I get to read a little information about the three collections they have contributed. There's a link to their homepage, as well as links to the collections. So I can jump into any of those collections. Similarly, we have a collections page for every collection. So if I click on that, I see a list again on alphabetical order, numerical first, of every digital collection. I happen to know, um, because these are in alphabetical order, that all of the Glacier National Park ones turn up on page two of these results. So if I enter two and scroll down, they helpfully named everything starting with the word glacier. So they're right together in an order, the Glacier National Park historical photos, the naturalist newsletters, and the superintendent annual reports of the things that have been contributed by the archive. Um, if I click on one of these, and I'll, we'll look at the photographs, we'll stick with that since that's what we started with. Again, you get a description of what you'll find in here, um, a link to the contributing institution page, as well as a link to all 395 images. And if you scroll down, you start to see a preview of the first 20 or so images, and then you can click the arrow to get to the rest as well. So there's two different ways to jump to the full collection. Coming back to the home page. We also have an exhibits page. Um, Glacier being a very popular place uh, means that not just Glacier National Park Archive, Archives has contributed content that is about or of the park, or from the park. And so we have put together some exhibits to try to pull together content for like topics. Um, right now this page is growing and so eventually it'll probably be divided up into multiple pages. But right now when you land on the page, you're gonna see some people types of exhibits. F.J. Haynes, L.A. Huffman, Henry Malloy, but more. Our newest one is Charlie Russell. We just published this this week, as well as places where you're gonna learn about the Hungry Horse Dam and the construction of the state capitol, early schools and uh, Glacier, boarding schools, Yellowstone, and then events, things like the 50th anniversary of our 72 Montana Constitutional Convention happened this year. We've had teachers create some of these, including this one, the decline of the bison population and the role of the Plains Chippewa in the 19th century. Um, and then we have some research guides just to help you research some of things that we know people come to our site to look at. I'm gonna go back up to this glacier one though. And I'm gonna open this exhibit. This gives you some historical information about the park itself. Um, it talks about our collections and it explains that we have content from Glacier National Park Archives, but also from University of Montana, as well as the um, Historical Society um, Research Center. When you look at this page, you're gonna see some images, samples. And if I keep scrolling on the left-hand side, you're gonna see this little tr uh, tree of the content that's here. So we're gonna see a preview of the PDF documents that are here. Then we'll see a preview of the maps that are here. And then we'll see a, um, a preview of audio and artwork and oral histories that are about or of the, the park. Each of these are um, hyperlinks. So you can click on them if you wanted to just look at the maps. Clicking on that will give me 11 maps of Glacier Park. So I can start to tour, look at those. Um, looking at maps online, if you haven't experienced this again because of the Zoom capabilities, if I click this to 100%, um, this is a really beautiful map that you get to see in really great detail um, when you start moving things around. So again, the little orange box is telling me how much at a time I am seeing. Um, and you can see that this one includes some artwork. It's a really beautiful look at the park in a, in a map version. Okay, I'm gonna hit the back arrow here so I go back to my results list here of location. Um, I mentioned that these are coming from multiple locations, not just the content that um, Glacier National Park has contributed. So there's now 1,162 photographs when before we had 395. And when we start going through this list, we'll see contributors like the Montana Historical Society Research Center listed, as well as University of Montana. 
Um, remember, I told you that these items stay with us. Format starts with has the following. So I, image was selected. Now, if I go into digital collection, I can narrow it down. If I only wanted to see those Glacier National Park photos, or if I wanted to see just the photographs from the Montana Historical Society that are related to Glacier, I can click on that and it should narrow it down. It didn't, as you can see. This is a fault in our system. It's something I've put a ticket in ages ago and I'm waiting for um, a response from Recollect. They have put this on hold because they've decided it's part of a much larger problem, but I wanted to demonstrate that for you so you could see there is an error. We know we are very aware of the error and it frustrates us, um, but we are working with our platform provider Recollect to try to fix that error. Um, so the other way you could do that is go to um, the photographs from Glacier National Park. And then um, instead of using digital collection as your variable, you would use geographic coverage and they would have listed Glacier National Park as the coverage there. And you could then click on those to change the parameters. I know that is not ideal and it's something, like I said, we're working to get fixed. Okay. I'm gonna go back to the home screen here. It was a little bit about exhibits and how those are organized. I want to mention our newsletters. We have um, a weekly newsletter that goes out that kind of talks about what new collections of content have been added and what kinds of things people can expect to find when they're searching the MMP. <clears throat> um, gives helpful hints. We send this out every Friday and they are listed here by year. Um, and when you look, click on the full PDF document view, those they're in order by volume one. Um, issue, volume and issue, so that you can look back at any of those as you would, as you would like. And then finally, in these tabs across the top, what I really want to focus on is the last one, help. We just added this help, um, which gives links to our help guides on how to search and how to find items, um, as well as some other commonly asked questions. When we get questions about the same thing over and over, we tend to write a help guide and then make it available so that you can find answers to your questions right here online. Um, so with that, I would like to just kind of demonstrate some searching. So like I said, there's lots of ways to browse, but from the home page, conducting a search is one of the best ways to find content you're looking for. Um, rather than browsing. So if, for example, Sperry Chalet was a place I wanted to look for, um, depending on what I wanted, I can uh, narrow that down under the format button. So if all I want are images of Sperry Chalet, I could come in here and check image. Notice I use two words here. So I need to go over here to search for and select exact phrase match. So it searches for these two words together, not every time the word Sperry shows up and every time the word Chalet shows up. Um, that's a really key hint to searching to help you um, improve search results anytime, especially if you're using a name first and last, to change this to exact phrase match searches for the two names together. Um, Jennifer being a very common name as my first name would show up in just about every yearbook and we have over 2000 yearbooks online. So um, that, that gets a little frustrating uh, as your results are not what you expect. So knowing that you can come in here, if I wanted to search within a spe specific date range, I could do that. And then I can tell it if it's searching just in the titles or all of the fields or the fields and the content. Um, fields and content means it's just searching all the metadata fields that I described earlier. And if it is a PDF document or a document, it's searching the text of that as well. So I'm gonna hit search to see what we come back with. And we got 10 results. Not bad. Um, and remember, I had checked, if I go back one tab here, I had checked image and it gave us 10 image results, okay? I'm gonna go back to this and I'm gonna uncheck image and we're gonna hit search just so you can see the difference. Um, Spiritually is mentioned in several of the reports. So it doesn't surprise me at all that we start to see some of the superintendent's reports here, um, as well as some of the nature notes. Again, those four ways to filter over here, we can open format. There's one document, 10 images, 23 PDFs, and one yearbook. So if I 
wanted to look at the one document, for example, like a click document, it should resolve it to that one document. This happens to be the Drum Woman Views online journal of the Montana Arts and Culture. Um, it didn't give me any preview hits, so this may have been a false hit. Sometimes that happens. Usually with a document, it'll say preview the hit, and you can hover over it and see that. Um, I'm going to uncheck that so we go back to our full results. I want to open one of these PDF documents, for example, and I'll open this 1918 one. You'll notice there's a search icon here and the words Sperry Chalet are here. And it's now telling me there's one of one match um, in this document. The box is probably sitting on my highlighted word. So that's one of the things that I wanted to share with you. If you wanna get rid of the noise on the screen, this little arrow over here will hide the metadata. And this little arrow over here, this little double arrow, will hide the description on the left. And then here is Sperry Chalet, now highlighted in a real pale green on the screen. And it makes this box a little easier to see, and it gives you a wider view to look at the text. You can do this with any item that you open, photograph, document, PDF document. You can hide these little descriptive things from the very side. And it's the little double arrows on each side of the screen. Okay, so I'm gonna hit that double arrow and pull that back out. And again, now we can see that the little box is sitting right on top of the word Sperry Chalet. And if I scroll slowly enough, I should be able to uncover those words. And I didn't do it slowly enough. There we go. Now Sperry Chalet is highlighted um, because it came at a page break. It wanted to jump to the page. So all right. I want to try another search. I'm going to search for the term grizzly. Um, I'm not going to select any format and I'm not going to select um, exact phrase match because it's only one word. I'm just going to hit search. And the reason I want to do this is because I wanted to see it pop up in a document style. So if you notice, these, these are the superintendent's annual reports from the Yellowstone National Park. There's that preview I was talking about. If it finds it in the text in a document instead of a PDF document, you can hit preview. You can read a little preview of what you'll find on the page. And then if you click it, you're going to open the page that that hit is on. It's not going to be highlighted in the document version. Um, so you have to kind of zoom in and look around on this page for the term grizzly um, and see if if you can find the words that were in that um, example that we saw. But if you look down here at the bottom, because this is a document and not a PDF style, the page is highlighted with this little green box to say it's on this page. If you look over here at the page counter, it's page 46 of this document. I can do a drop down menu and see all of the pages that are in this document. There are 71 altogether. I can jump around them either by clicking on the thumbnails down here or by clicking on this page view over here to get through the document. So this is a document versus that PDF document that we looked at a moment ago. And the um, Glacier National Park reports and their um, uh, nature notes are now all done in PDF format. Um, I think that works better because once you open a PDF format, say we'll open this one, you can search it with any term you want. So we had searched Sperry Chalet to get to this particular document, but I could change this now and see if the term grizzly happens to be in here. And it did find one. Um, and it's highlighted there um, just behind the box. And so if I scroll up just a hair, I can take a look at but the, what they are saying about grizzly in this document. Sorry for this backward scrolling here. So then I can read how grizzly was referred to within in this particular document. It's on page 14 of 23 within this PDF. With PDF view, you also have a double arrow over here to show PDF um, tools for how to view an item. With a PDF document, you notice you don't have that um, explode to full size view. 
Um, we do have a download button and add to my collection, again, a contact us or a citation. Um, there's nothing to tag, so there's no tag option, but there is a recollection option. So if there's something about this report you wanted to add uh, your story about, you can. And then there's also the copyright information. And again, the metadata here on the right hand side. So, so far, everything I've shown you has been with me logged out. But one of the amazing things about being logged in is this My History page. You can register just by putting in your name and an email address. We encourage you to use your first and last name and an email address um, that we recognize because we don't allow everyone to join. Um, we've had a lot of fake Russian emails coming through. And so we don't add everybody. So please use a, um, a name and email address that makes sense though, so that we can recognize you as an actual user. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna switch to my other browser um, where I have been doing some work this morning. So there is my history. I am logged in and you can see all the items I viewed on the page this morning, as well as searches I have performed. And why this is great is if I found something that I really wanted to get back to, um, all I had to do was come over here and uh, click on that item in my list and it takes me back to that page. So here I was looking, did a search for the term bighorn sheep. I came back with a couple of photos. This one is from Glacier National Park, but it's from the Montana Historical Society Research Center. It was taken by Forsyth. Um, and I could see this great stereographic image. Again, I can zoom in and out on this. You will notice that the resolution is not as clear on this particular image because of, again, how it was scanned by the contributing institution as some of the images from Glacier. Glacier has done an amazing job of some high quality scans, which we greatly appreciate. If I go back to my private collection, or to my, excuse me, I have to hit the back arrow, um, to my history, everything that I have done today is here. As soon as I close out and I'm logged off, all of this disappears. So this is only being kept for your current session. And it says that here at the top. So keep that in mind. Um, but if I wanna keep something for longer, I can add it to my profile or to my collection, excuse me. Under my collection, I actually get a list of things that I have saved or favorited from the MMP. And I can then sort those into kind of a folder system here over at the right. So I can start a new collection, then I can check any of these items, select the collection I want to add it to, hit add, and it'll be here for, for me anytime I'm logged in to come back to, not just for this one session. So being able to log in allows you two really important pieces of additional usage. The My History lets you look at your search history for the day, and the My Collection that allows you to save items to a collection. So in order to save items to a collection, I'm gonna go back out to um, a search here. And we'll do Bighorn Sheep again because there were some great images in there. And I'm gonna do image only. And I'm gonna search for the exact phrase. And I'm gonna hit search. And there is um, a lamb captured in Glacier. So one, once I go, once I'm at this level, I have two different ways to add it to my collection. I can check it and check it and then say, my collections. And it says your collection's been updated. I can also do that from in here. Once I open the photo, on the left, there's a star, add to my collection. And it will notify me, hey, this is already in your collection. You already liked this once before. So uh, now I can go to my collection. And now I should see those two new images here. So if I want to start a new collection, I'm going to call this Glacier. I'm going to create that new collection. Maybe. There it went. Oh, I created it twice even. So I'm going to go over here and check these two until I want it to add it to that first Glacier one. And add those. So now if I click on this first Glacier button, I should see those two pictures. And if I expand this one, I should see nothing. And since it was an error, here's a red X and I can delete that one. 
So it's going to tell me it's removing all the items in there. I don't have any, so that's okay. Um, I'm going to expand this first Glacier one again, and now I can share this collection. So if I have collected a bunch of photos that I want to share with a colleague who's also doing similar research or something of that nature, I can share this collection with everyone in the group or with a group, and I can rename the collection or I can delete it. So those are my options here. I can also delete any checked items from this list. So if I'm done with this list and I'm working on other things, I want to clean this up, I can delete any of them from this list. That puts us at 1237, and I think I've modeled most of the searching tools that I wanted to model. And at this point, I'd like to open it up for any questions that you may have. I'm going to um, turn my camera back on. I'm going to keep sharing my screen in case there's something you would like me to share with you. Okay. Thanks for that great demonstration. Um, so welcome. if you have questions, you're free to type them into the chat or you can use the reactions menu um, again either at the top of the screen or in the middle of your screen if you as you scroll across it and there's one that looks like a hand and you can click on that and that will raise your hand to and I'll call on you to and unmute you to ask the question so I had a question as you were searching on bighorn as two different words. Yeah. Um, if you run bighorn together as one word, do you get a different result? It's a great question and it's certainly something to try. So searching is never exact. I did this with grizzly, grizzly bear. I've done this with bighorn sheep. I also did this with um, bear grass, one word and bear grass, two words and came back with very different results because it does read it exactly, especially if you click that exact phrase match instead of all or any keywords search for exactly that typing. So if I search bighorn sheep with it as one word, I get 94 results. Now I did not tell it what format. So if I go up here to format now, there are 16 images, which is way more than we had the first time around. So I'm gonna click that. And yes, we get a very different set of results. So thank you for asking that. It's a perfect question. And you will also notice so here's this young Indian boy wearing a long jacket. Why does he come back with the search of bighorn? Remember I told you it's searching because we told it to search the item and the contents. So it found it, it found it here on the description that his coat is made of bighorn sheep hide. So um, sometimes what the result you're looking for may not be exact because it's searching um, all these other terms as well. So if I go back to the search results, you know, here's another example. There's a bighorn sheep on the wall here. I'm assuming that's why. There is a bighorn sheep here. This one, not so obvious. So again, if we click on this, I'm sure there's something in the description. There it is, with images of elk and bighorn sheep. So that must be on, yep, somebody's clothing right here. Other questions? Let's see, I do have someone with their hand raised. Here we go. So Edwin, you can ask your question now. You can unmute yourself and ask. Edwin, if you don't have a mic, please type into the chat because we aren't hearing you. Yeah, he's still muted. Let me see if I can unmute him. So Edwin, you can type your question or you can unmute your microphone and ask. I will mention while I'm on this page, you can refine search terms once you've done a search. So because we searched for bighorn sheep, 
Now that we're on this page, if we want to refine, we can add or restrict keywords. Um, so we can add another term here and update and our search results would update. That unfortunately is not on all of our browse pages and it's another thing I've requested from Recollect our platform um, to add to browse pages so you can start a term for a search from any browse page. So we're still not hearing you, Edwin. Um, while he's working that out, does anyone else have a question they would like to ask? I will mention um, while we're waiting for questions that we have a Facebook page or an, uh, a Twitter page and an Instagram page. You can follow us on any of those by searching Montana Memory Project. Um, we post every day. This month, our theme is schools. So you'll notice the images on our homepage for this month have all been of students and schools. Um, every month that changes, we also change the images on our homepage to keep it fresh every month and usually related to whatever our theme is on our social media. Well, not hearing any other questions, Edwin, you'll have to email us um, and contact us and we'll get with Jennifer and have her get back to you with her the answer on that. Um, meanwhile, we're going to close this session now. We want to thank everyone again for joining us today. Thanks so much to Jennifer for presenting, also our planning and tech team who's helping in the background. Um, be sure to join us tomorrow at noon for another great presentation. This one will be by Dr. James Glazier of the Calgary Zoo on the Half Moon Hair Streak Butterfly Recovery Project in Waterton Lakes National Park. We are interested in your feedback on the webinar audio and video quality. Please feel free to share your comments or additional questions on this presentation with us at Brown RLC at NPS.gov. And I think we're going to pop that into the chat to get, so you can get the spelling on that email address. Thank you again. Have a great day, and we'll see you again tomorrow. Thank you. Tara, was the sound okay? Could you hear me and everything? Yes, you sounded great. Awesome. Thank you. Uh -huh. Have and a great day. You.